Hi, this is Michelle at AppWorks, and today I'll be talking about global fields and how to use them. So let's get started. A global field is basically just a field that uses global storage. This means it will contain one value across all records in a file. Another cool thing is that global fields are accessible from any context meaning you don't need a relationship to be able to access the field and its value. To demonstrate this, let's create a global field. We'll go to Manage Database. We'll go to our tables. And one best practice is to keep all of your global fields in a globals table. Again, since your global fields will be accessible from any context, there's no reason you can't keep all of your global fields in one place while still accessing them from anywhere in your app. I'm going to start by deleting these default fields that were created by FileMaker because we'll only ever have one record in the table, so we don't need any of this other metadata information. I'm going to be creating a global status field. So we'll start with G, status, and click Create. To access the field options, I'll double click on the field name, go to Storage, and here is where you'll find the Use Global Storage option. Once you've selected Global Storage, you'll notice that the indexing options are automatically turned off. So one thing to know is that you cannot perform finds on global fields. We'll click OK and we'll click OK to save our new table and our new field. If we go to our layouts, you'll see that FileMaker has created the globals layout for us. And I'm going to create a few records here to demonstrate global storage. For our status, I'm going to type in completed. I'm going to save that and now, as I scroll through all these records, you'll see that the completed value is in all of the records. Another thing you should know about global fields is that their behavior is slightly different in a local copy of a database, like I'm working in now, versus a hosted copy of a database. In a local copy, each time I reopen the database, this global status field will retain the same value it had when I closed it. This will work slightly different in a hosted database. Once the file becomes hosted, each time a user opens up the database, this global field will have whatever value was in it at the time the file became hosted. For instance, if I were to host this database right now, then this status field would have the value of completed every single time any user opens up the database. Once the file is hosted, if new global fields are created, then they will have no value at the beginning of each session. Also note that each user has its own session for the global field. My global status field might say completed, while another user logged on at the same time could have changed this to in progress. Now that we understand the basics of global fields, let's talk about how we might use them. So first, let's switch back to our task list. One of the most common uses for global fields are as filters, meaning we can use a global field on this layout to filter our found set. This technique utilizes a couple of advanced concepts such as scripting and script triggers. So I'll just quickly demonstrate how this could work. First, let's put our new global status field on the layout. I'll go into layout mode, and I'm simply going to copy the current status field that we have. It's already a drop-down menu with the value list that we want. So I'm going to copy and paste this up in my top navigation part. I'm going to make it a little smaller so it fits better maybe 12 points. We won't worry too much about how this looks right now. 
To change this to our global field, I'm going to double click on the field, go to our globals table, and again, as we can see, it is an unrelated table, but we'll select our global status field. And I'm just gonna make sure that this anchors over here to the right. And let's go ahead and go into browse mode so we can see that our status field still has the value of completed, just like what did when we set it on our globals layout. If I click on this field, we'll see the value list for the status that we're looking for. And if we change it, of course, nothing's gonna happen. We haven't hooked up a script to it, so we'll do that next. We'll start by opening our script workspace. We'll create a new script called filter task list. And the first thing we'll do is we will enter find mode. No need to pause here. We're going to set the status field in our task list. So we'll specify that status. And the value that we're gonna put in this is actually going to be our global field. Another cool thing about global fields is that they retain their value even in find mode. So this will be accessible to us when we're performing our script. That's all we need to do. So we're going to perform find. And now all we need to do is attach this script to our global status field as a script trigger. So what we'll do is we'll say on object save, meaning somebody clicked on the status field, changed the value, and as it's saving, it will then run our filter task list script. So we'll say okay, and let's try this out. We're gonna change this to in progress, and now we've got our found set of in progress. Same works for pending, postponed. We didn't put any error capturing in, so we are gonna get FileMaker's default uh, error saying that no records match this find criteria, and that's fine. We'll say continue, and we should have at least one completed. So now that you've had a taste of how powerful global fields are and what you can use them for, definitely continue to play with them and see what other use cases you can come up with.